Tori Mullen with Mullen on this training here. <laughs> Gary with Synergy K Fit. Hello. Today's topic on our mindset is going to be about stress okay, and how we're dealing with said stress. This is actually the baby of her topic. So we're going to allow her to introduce ways or methods that she has used in the past to deal with stress. Because I know we're all dealing with stress with the way the world's working right now. Um, there's a lot of undue stress or a lot of uncertainty surrounding the pandemic and uh, disclosure, right? I mean, there's a lot of information going around of what's going on, who's leading us, what they represent, their motives, uh, maybe some of the skeletons they've had in their closet, if you've noticed. On our own two fronts, we've actually posted some stuff that we've disclosed or we feel is the truth. So that can add a layer of stress. But regardless with all that, there's a lot of components that go into stress and obviously we need ways to deal with that said stress. So without further ado, uh, let's allow Carrie to share with us some of the ways that she's had to deal with stress in the past and some of the more effective or healthier ways that she's done that. Alright, well, I think more in terms of stress is just kind of rebuilding habits. Um, and I think the biggest thing that I've come across that I have dealt with as well as clients might be that glass of wine that you look forward to every night after work to calm down, get yourself ready for bed. But at the end of the day, does it really actually help get rid of any of that stress or is it just masking that problem? And does that glass of wine turn into a whole bottle of wine? Maybe sometimes. Um, I know when I worked in the hospitality industry, that kind of added up from an entire stressful day that it would just be like, well, we're going to go have some drinks now. and let's not deal with anything that happened today and just forget about it essentially. So I think with that comes, there's a stress aspect or a trigger and you're just kind of masking it with alcohol and not necessarily dealing with it. Um, so in terms of stress, what is it that is getting to you? Think about that trigger and then from there, moving forward, try and avoid any sort of I don't know like masking properties like do you go to the fridge right away to go have the little emotional eating binge or do you over exercise just to feel better about whatever the situation is but does it actually help you through your stress sometimes yes but if we're working out six or seven days a week and we're not actually allowing recovery time to de-stress Yes, working out is a good form of stress, but it's added stress to stress that you already have. So, I don't know. I'm listing off all the things right now. It's okay. We can flow. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. It's all about flow. I mean, I think the biggest, you know, common narrative that we can all agree upon is there's a lot of uncertainty in life and events happen to uh, allow us to react. The only issue is if we're really focusing on our how-to or what we need to obtain to become something as opposed to just understanding what our story is, what we want to represent or how we're showing up in our space and our vibration and our frequency. When we get caught up with the how-to, we get overwhelmed or over inundated with fear, insecurity, uncertainty. And if you allow that input into your body or you allow that type of impulsive emotional reaction uh, through the sources of media that you're tapping into, the communication you're having with yourself or with others, like the people you spend time with the choices you make with your health and wellness whether that be you know like she said coming home to a stressful day at work and having a bottle of wine to try to escape or jumping on a Netflix series that you know sure is entertaining but it's not really necessarily finding out where these triggers are coming from and why this cyclical problem keeps happening uh, you're never necessarily gonna get out of that hole and I think the biggest thing is really becoming confident or comfortable with your why and becoming comfortable and confident with your story. Your story should represent who you definitely feel like you are, what you're going to become, the work or the commitment you need to have in order to become that. And if you're always focusing on your why and who you want to be as opposed to how it's going to happen, right there you've taken a layer of stress out of the equation. When you're trying to measure out all the layers that need to go into how you're going to get there, whether that be money, um, what people may perceive of you or your image, um, the amount of weight you need to wear, you weigh, or the clothes you have to wear, all those things just become 
uh, you know, overwhelming if I'm trying to balance all those things, along with all the other events that'll come with work and connections and relationships that you have with people. Mm -hmm. But if you're open and transparent with yourself about, again, what your why is, uh, what you want. Like if I show up in a space and the first thing I ask myself is, I want to yada, yada, yada. And then the next question that I have is, I am willing to yada, yada, yada. And then after that, the, the next conversation, the question I have is, the experience I want to gain from this is such and such. And I keep replaying that method with events that I've been a part of or events that I'm about to go embark on. Again, I'm creating that conscious rather than impulsive notion to react. I'm being conscious, I'm making a decision and sticking with the said choice with confidence or conviction and direction. So then when I'm faced with events, uh, they don't affect me so much with the amount of confusion that I can allow into my space, right? If I allow those how-tos to take over, as opposed to, I wanna show up for Carrie today, uh, and my story is, I wanna help and enrich people with health and wellness. I've taken the levels of uh, you know, education or I've had personal experiences with setbacks and failures and with those set setbacks and failures I've transitioned that into opportunities and education or methods to heal and if I show up at the space like that she could share everything she wanted with me as to why it wouldn't happen and that doesn't necessarily matter I'm here to help deal with her stress because that's what my story is my story or my why is to help people and enrich people's lives no matter what the challenge may be or how many challenges may be in there because I want to show up with that space and I want to show up with that problem solving uh, mechanic or I want to show up with that energy and that love and that gratitude. So just flipping that mindset or just flipping that, um, I guess, opportunity or failure faced with that set event, in this case, you know, she had an injury or something happened in her life, that doesn't matter. What matters is, again, my how-to isn't necessarily the first thing I think about. The first thing I think about was I made a commitment to be a leader in the fitness and or in the health and wellness industry because I know to the depths of who I am as a very loving, uh, supportive, attentive uh, leader. That's what I've chosen to do. That's what I really want to represent. That's what my story represents. So if I focus on those things, again, I can always show up in a space or an event and navigate through the how-tos or the stress that may come along with it. So I think getting uh, more attached to your story and your why it makes a big difference. I wasn't always like this, just like you probably had struggles with it. It all came from mentorship and allowing a new sense of input. Taking courses or uh, meditating or finding that spiritual component of connectivity, which we're all really searching for because it's challenging out there right now. A lot of people are dealing with a lot of events or situations that are quite fearful and add on to the layers of the how-to for the stress. And again, we always have a conscious choice to make those said decisions to either feed into our story or progress our lives or escape from the, the, the troubles or the problems that we typically have. Would you like to elaborate on any of that? Mm, I think in terms of that, just like being careful of whether or not you're getting into the all or nothing approach. Um, so you're on two very extreme sides of like saying you're coming to help me and it doesn't matter essentially what's right. going on too overworked or right. you're too something that you can't fully show up yeah right and that's just like one scenario but a lot of it could be um let's say you're starting out with a coach they give you an extreme meal plan that you're not used to having to cut out everything but you need to cut it out because they want you to lose weight and right. they want you to lose weight fast mm -hmm. and so yeah, I could be totally committed to it or I could essentially tell them to go fuck off. But I wouldn't say that. I would just maybe not tell them that I'm not following it, but tell them that it's good. And then where are we left at? So I think there's also like a vulnerability component and Absolutely. an openness. And I think a lot of that does come from having that all or nothing, always being fearful of judgment or whatever it is. And so you almost end up getting on this burnt out spectrum of just putting yourself into so much yeah. that it's just Spread yourself too thinly. overwhelming and you just can't even handle it yourself. So I know for me, um, finding time to not be as reactive to things, yeah. like I fell into a spectrum of everything was happening to me instead of for me for mm -hmm. a while. And I literally was so reactive about everything that it's just like, I don't know why I can't control anything in my life right, right. now. And 
it was not a good time for me. So um, I had to get a lot more present and stop overthinking. I'm a big overthinker. Um, stop overthinking about everything that happened in the past because as soon as I kind of get into that moment of rehashing things that happened, oh, I could have said this or I could have done this differently or it's like, well, you could have done that, but there's no time for that anymore because it's no longer happening. Right. And so if I'm dwelling on that, I'm just kind of making myself miserable rather yeah. than focusing on the things that I can put my effort and energy into that is not wasted. So... They were learning opportunities, more or less, mm -hmm. right? And to second what she was saying, I you know I kind of left that out there. I was just vibing. Um, showing up with vulnerability or indisposure is a big, uh, you know, missing, I guess, gift that we can give one another. Again, we need to show up in a space that's going to serve not only ourselves but others, like she was, you know, alluding to. But as she was also getting into, I think just being open and honest and vulnerable has a way of allowing people into your space and understanding exactly what you're going through. So we don't have to make assumptions or expectations mm -hmm. uh, govern our next choice when we show up for not only ourselves but for others. So full disclosure and vulnerability is a very powerful tool. And it's just, it, it unloads all the stress that we're holding on. Like she said, I could show up, we didn't talk about this earlier in this video, but when I showed up today, I said, hey, I didn't get the greatest sleep last night. Um, super hot in my room whatever that may look like I'm a little low on energy that disclosure allows her to understand that the space that we're gonna share together at this moment he may be a little challenged with coming up with the next movement and this and that she has more respect for that because there was an open line of communication I'm still a ball buster but you know. right there's nothing <laughs> wrong with you know having full disclosure or having an ability to say okay today isn't the day for me because of a B and C but being aware of that and not shoving it down mm -hmm goes back to what we were talking about in respects to our story. Our story means there's going to be layers of, you know, areas that I have strengths and then layers that I'll have weaknesses. But again, if I show up with vulnerability or disclosure into that space, not only with myself, but with the next person, you create a level of connectivity or a vibration and a frequency that is very powerful. So never feel bad about your stress. Almost take it as an opportunity to give yourself that ability to not necessarily react impulsively. Mm -hmm. Give yourself some grace is what she was alluding to. Uh, and just maybe practice the simple technique of the pause. So in reacting into what we're seeing this day and age, and that's essentially where we're, we're starting to move towards, right? Like her example of the, the wine is you've had a stressful day and that impact or the impulses that said stress has now forced you into, I need to relax. And you need some type of a method or an object, or in this case, a liquid to bring down your frequency of stress that is an impulsive reaction can we practice the pause that allows us to understand that those are valid feelings those are valid emotions but does it attach itself or align itself to my story or my why if we can combine those components a lot of the times when we're faced with these events which are inherently neutral it gives us an opportunity to practice where we want to become or where we're going as opposed to having that initial reaction and guess what like she said also you may not always be great at this so having grace and gratitude with yourself is a big thing so my biggest takeaways out of this video today uh, focus on your why focus on who you want to become focus on your gratitude and love that you have not only for yourself re-establishing that self-love and understanding you're human and there's going to be stressful components and areas where you may not have all the answers and that's fine but if you know intrinsically who you are Follow that purpose, follow that premise, and share it with everybody. That vibration or that attraction will come along and pay you in dividends, give you gifts that you've never seen before. Um, and then also uh, having patience and grace and gratitude with yourself because not every day is gonna be amazing. You will resort back to some of the things that you had habitually that maybe didn't serve your purpose for now and for the future. That's normal, you're human. I have the same problems, I'm pretty sure she does from time to time as well. So just those would be my biggest takeaways about this, you know, big, full encompassing uh, challenge of life, which is stress. That would be my takeaways. Uh, and you're not supposed to have all the answers. You still have a conscious choice or a conscious decision to allow new input to get to this level. I wasn't always this person. In fact, we'll give these people a chance to go by. I was quite the opposite. I wore this protective shield of this ego maniac who thought he was you know invincible but behind the scenes I was very 
unhappy and uh, I was quite depressed and I struggled a lot. And it wasn't until I sought out mentorship and I sought out new input to allow myself to get to that space of thinking and having conscious breaths and understanding that other people are going through stuff. I stopped being such a martyr and expecting everything that I did for people to be you know, amazing and they were supposed to get it. Well, they're going through stuff too. So I had to find that common balance and it wasn't always like this. There was a time where I still made those conscious decisions or those habits that didn't serve who I really wanted to be or what I figured I was. So it, it takes practice, have grace and gratitude with yourself. Um, and that comes through input. You're not supposed to have all the answers. It's always good to reach out for help. People allow that and they find value within themselves when you're able to reach out for them for something. And especially with your closest people, man, never have that conversation where you think that you can't have it. That's bullshit. Anybody who's, who you say you love and you know you say you have their back, no conversation should be you know, taboo. Have every conversation you figure you need to have because you could be helping them or they could be helping you in ways that could definitely catapult you in the direction where you want to be. So that'd be my biggest takeaway for today. Uh, what would be yours? Mm, I think my biggest takeaway is just um, going back into that like fear of judgment, um, being vulnerable. You would be very surprised, like 100% surprised at how many people have been through the exact exactly. same or very similar situations as you. Um, and had I maybe brought it up 20 years ago, I would have been in a yeah. different place earlier on, yeah. but we live and we learn. So um, I think the biggest thing is also definitely learning whether or not to react to things. If it does not serve you in the next five days to be upset about it, or the next three hours, if you're gonna forget about yeah. it, it's not worth reacting to at that time. Right. Um, it's just extra energy that you're wasting on something that isn't going to matter so spend your energy wisely and if you're looking for something more tailored toward mindfulness and just being more present i would definitely check out the power of now by Everett. right i mean some of the input that i've allowed in my space is tony robbins is a great example uh, there's lots of podcasts out there that practice spirituality meditation is a big thing I actually am working with a good friend of mine now that is a meditation expert uh, Michael Fraser he's going to be sharing those levels of stress control or relief that I can practice with the mindfulness of meditation and she's also been a big factor for that for me as well just giving me feedback on areas where I may have been asked acting with too much masculine energy or too much pizzazz and not learning how to just <laughs> chill the chill the f out and respect the journey and um, you know have grace and gratitude with myself because that was one of the biggest things missing before was self-love and i'm pretty sure we all struggle with that that's where a lot of stress comes from it, it's starting from or originating from the fact that you have faults or failures or uncertainties within and because you're faced with these set events you're now doubling up on well can i do this right i was like before we get yeah. super super deep into this it just all comes down to like placing i guess validation from external perspectives yeah and the more that you're looking for external validation from other people to say that you're beautiful mm -hmm. or that you are capable and whatever else it is that you're out there searching for maybe start looking for it inwardly yeah i mean I took a course recently, it was called The Gift, through Integrity Seminars. There's that endorsement, because it's an amazing course. But that was some of the things, remember we get a choice to habitually make changes. We all have the choice when we're faced with whatever event or stimulus. And one of those things that we committed to was creating habitual, I guess, emotional fitness progression. And for me, the self-love was a big deal. So when I wake up in the morning, I give myself three words of self-gratitude or self-love that I wasn't allowing into my space before. In fact, it was the opposite, right? And I held behind. Oh yeah. And I, I held behind the shield of my physical fitness and people pumping my tires for that. But that only takes me so far, right? Your physicality only takes you so far. I mean, it's a definite pinnacle of success. It's one of those, I guess, parts of the triangle that ultimately measures that level of success and, I guess, love and gratitude and uh, leadership, but it's not everything. So I had to work on those things. So becoming aware of those things, uh, allowing input will help you navigate through stress and having grace with yourself. 
and always feel free to reach out and share. You don't need to hold on to these things. They don't need to stack down in you. You can always let it out. There will be somebody out there that will help you. I know I can definitely help. I know Terry can help. And we sought out help when we were struggling through these things too. So definitely always look for it. You're never alone when you may think you are. Uh, and we love you guys. I know if you love us too, you probably do. That's why you're watching. Okay? So thanks for tuning in today. Uh, this was a really good topic, I thought. Stress, you know, we're dealing with a lot these days. Let's let's find a way to help each other out. Let's not allow, you know, the uncertainty of these troubling times or these challenging times to overwhelm us to the point where we can't keep progressing as people because that should still not get in the way of your why and who you want to become. There's lots of people being successful right now in these challenging times. I'm one of those people. Uh, I'm pretty sure she is too, and I know you can be too. So, again, thanks for tuning in today talk soon. Uh, we'll see you at our next mindset video.